Hello and welcome. Today we are going over the Toyota GR Corolla, a car that's been highly requested since the launch of the game. And well, we need to answer a few questions. Firstly, is the car overhyped? Was it worth the wait? And is it the best new hot hatch in Gran Turismo 7? So, in today we're going to answer all of those questions and see how good this car really is. So, if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, don't forget, leave a like and subscribe for more content just like this. Sorry, but I just had to leave that in. This has to have one of the best, sorry, this has to be the best startup sound out of a hot hatch in this game it was the grrr that that honestly it, it caught me off guard i'm not gonna lie to you there's no other hot hatch that i know of that when it red lines it's shooting so with all that being said let's see okay yes the car sounds great but how does it feel around circuit now when we come around kyoto driving park no traction on the vehicle, I'm not even gonna lie to you here, it feels a bit underwhelming. I don't know what it was, maybe I got catfished by the fact that this car was making such aggressive tones. But coming up to this first corner around Kyoto Driving Park, the car barely reaches over 200 kilometers per hour. Then when it comes to handling, it does this weird thing where if you're going around a corner and you brake, the front tries to like throw itself out i'm not used to that at all but even like going up through the s's around kyoto driving park you can take them flat out because you aren't going that fast i don't know why i thought this car is going to be an absolute rocket ship but apparently it's not in its standard form it's not really screaming wow look at me i'm the best performance car out there I mean standard it has 299 brake horsepower and a weight of 1445 kgs now you might be thinking okay that sounds reasonably decent for a hatch but then once we actually compare it to the other cars which are up for the title of best hot hatch in the game and we just look at the stats we see that the Yaris is actually a but on the downside because we see that the Yaris has 299 brake horsepower as said however the A45 AMG is producing 355 and the Focus RS produces 350 brake horsepower we are down a substantial amount of power over those vehicles however we are a lot lighter than them but just the power difference is honestly so massive yes we do have a hundred kgs over both vehicles but i think the power is where it really makes a difference now one thing i must say this is just a personal thing but looks wise this is such a fantastic looking hot hatch and if i had to pick one of them on just looks alone i have to go with the gr corolla now when it comes to just the overall standard performance of the vehicle on road it's okay it's not gonna sit you back or make you gasp in any way really be that surprised or amazed with the performance coming out of this vehicle however when you take it off road that is a completely different story the way the suspension is set up and the way it handles bumps the only thing I can fault it on when it comes to off-roading around Sardinia windmills I found that the transmission because I was running an auto gearbox the car labors a lot in foot gear it like doesn't want to go into fifth it's just on the edge of high RPMs but it doesn't want to shift you can feel that the car is almost being restricted however the level of grip off-road is absolutely insane I don't know if it's because okay we aren't going that fast to actually slide out 
but you can get this vehicle to chuck his rear end out and just Scandinavian flick this vehicle all over the place you can just get it to handle like a pure rally car this is the way rally cars are supposed to feel in Grand Turismo 7 however the rally cars have so much power and slide out a lot this is honestly like a early entry level rally car that's the kind of vibe that I get from the way this vehicle handles off-roading it's such a blast and yes it may not be the fastest thing out there but the way it just carries itself around an off-road course is a lot better than the way it carries itself around the track now we can fix the biggest issue with this vehicle and that is the vehicle's lack of power now when we head on over to the tuning shop we see that we are gonna have a lot of upgrades so now once we fully upgraded after spending a couple hundred thousand we are gonna be left with 467 brake horsepower and a weight of 1127 kgs which isn't too shabby at all now if we head on over to GT also and just look at the customization of this vehicle we see that for the front we have two front lips side skirts we have two options for side skirts and then for the rear we have two diffusers so you can really spice it up in your own way you don't have to have a carbon copy of someone else you can really make it unique and different and what i like about this car is actually the rear spoilers we don't just get the default hot hatch spoiler that we always get we actually have a very spicy option that doesn't look bad at all all, and that goes for both of the rear wing options now I just went for a vibrant orange color that really just shouted look at me and I slapped some PBS's on because I couldn't really be that creative now when it comes to how the vehicle handles that now that is fully upgraded the amount of grip that this vehicle produces is honestly mind-blowing there's grip a hundred percent of the time when it comes to now the end of the straightaway where we just reached over 200 kilometers per hour well we're clocking about 250 so there is a massive difference but the way you brake and the way the car grips around corners is honestly just a chattering i just need to confirm if this car actually has more downforce than the focus rs but i do know for certain it produces more downforce than the mercedes a45 amg and that's why even though the amg is a lot more powerful when it comes to the vehicle being fully upgraded compared to the yara i mean compared to the corolla the corolla is able to still set the same lap time during the same conditions everything just because you're able to push the corolla a lot harder and just know that there is a lot more grip and when it comes to braking, the braking system is so responsive with the Corolla. That is what really surprised me. But you can feel there is a massive difference in performance. But just handling alone is what is absolutely shocking with this vehicle. There is no slippage whatsoever. Even with a torque vectoring differential, if you set it to all of the power going to the rear wheels, the car does not slide out if your vehicle is on racing soft i was yanking the handbrake and everything and the vehicle you could see it was being forced to slide out but it re but it regains traction so quickly that it, it, honestly it's, it's something i haven't felt before now to some that might be a bit boring but as i'm gonna say when it comes to the vehicle being over hyped i can see that being a possibility it may not meet your expectations but it's not a bad vehicle overall was it worth the wait i'm gonna say it was however i do wish we were able to get a bit more power out of the corolla's engine just having it at 500 brake horsepower feels like a little bit just it feels underpowered to me if you are getting 600 or even 550 that could be honestly game changing but 
who knows what Grant is about? We might even get two Jay Z swap for the scene next month. Who, who knows? But overall, the vehicle is an absolute blast. Will I say it's the best hot hatch right now? I will say I'm still gonna take the Ford Focus RS over this car. Yes, it is a fantastic vehicle. However, I just feel like the Ford offers a bit more of everything. If you wanna throw the vehicle sideways, you can do that. If you wanna go drag racing, you can do that. If you wanna do uh, money grinding events with the Focus, you can do that. The Focus just offers everything and it does everything well. Whereas I feel like the Corolla does everything well, but it just doesn't meet the level of the Ford Focus RS. So, with all that being said, oh sorry, and the Corolla around Kyoto Driving Park sits lap times around 1 minute 35 seconds fully upgraded, which is around the same ballpark as like your mid-level V8 sports cars in the game or your engine swap K cars. So it's setting a pretty average lap time, nothing really to say wow this thing's insanely fast but it's really good even if you take it off road once again with it being fully upgraded it, it's honestly a fantastic vehicle. Is it gonna be the fastest off road vehicle? Absolutely not but it is still an absolute blast even if you wanna take it off road. So. The Toyota GR Corolla, a fantastic addition to Grand Turismo 7 in my opinion, but I want to hear from you guys, how do you feel about this vehicle? So, with all this being said, if you guys did go on to enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more GC7 content. Peace.